Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let my heart always be open to welcome your love. Send forth thy light and thy love, O Lord. Fill my heart in thy Holy Spirit. Scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians in the fourth chapter. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace 
will be with you. These words from Paul are actually the preceding verses to a very famous passage. I can do all things through him who strengthens me, which we'll get to uh, in a few moments. <clears throat> but this encouragement from Paul to focus on the good things, as he said, the pure, the just, the commendable, the excellent, things worthy of praise. Think about these things. To place our mind not on things that makes us anxious or worried or fearful, but to think about the goodness of God and the richness of God's gifts to us. Now, in this Lenten season, we've been focusing on prayer. Prayers in Scripture, prayers of Jesus, prayers in the early church, and with the larger encouragement for us to redevelop and re-strengthen our prayer life. Today, I'd like to go on a bit of a journey with you, a journey um, to think about different ways that we can live out what Philippians talks about by thinking on good things. And one of the prayer practices that I think, for me, best lives into this encouragement is the prayer practice of listening. Too often we only define prayer as talking to God, of sharing our worries to God or our thanks to God. But God also has things to say to us. So where can we take time and find space to listen, to quiet our hearts, to ponder both the commendable and the just and the pure, but also to hear what God might be saying to us? So I'm going to take you on a journey to a few of my favorite places, at least within my quarantine um, zone, we'll call it. And uh, share a little bit along the way. So, let's go on a let's go on a journey. So this is a very special spot for me. This is my chair, and uh, I know many people have their own chair, but it's in a spot in our home where I often begin my day. Uh, whether that's having a cup of coffee, uh, having some time for prayer, or just being still for a few moments. So sometimes it's good to get outside, but we also maybe need, if we have the, have the possibility of having a space inside our home that we designate as a space to sit still and to listen. So the encouragement would be, where can you find a space? A space that's not in the busyness of your home, but a place for you to sit, put your, put your feet up, to ponder what God might be saying to you for the day and to calm your spirit. Where would that place be for you? Where is that place for you? So here I am in my backyard. Nice sunny day. And I can sit here and just listen to the sound of an airplane going in for a landing, and if you hear close enough, the sound of birds in the air, and I think that in and of itself offers us both the nature that God created and the technology that we rely upon, and to have those happening at the same time, to me, gives me a lot to ponder. And so just sitting outside, listening to the sounds of nature and to the sounds of even a muted uh, busyness in our metro area allows me to think about my relationship with God as well as to listen to what God might be saying to me. I'd encourage you to get outside if you can. Such a time of our year that's filled with the awakening 
of nature. And for me, at least, that gives me a great deal of hope. Oh, hello. Here I am in my garden, just doing a little spring cleanup as we get ready for the growing season. And uh, it's another way we can pray and listen to God is to get our fingers dirty, to get out in our garden, to get our hands dirty, and to remember that God made humanity out of the dirt. And we actually find healing in being outside in nature and working with our hands. Now, I'm not much of a gardener, but I'm beginning to appreciate its many virtues and encourage you to do the same. And a final prayer practice that I would commend is what I call the art of paying attention. Sometimes we just need to sit and take a look and see what's happening in our own neighborhood, our own front yard. So I'd encourage you to take time to consider about consider prayer in these different sorts of ways and to pay attention, to listen, and to, to realize that our need to focus on the positive things that God's, God has given us, to focus on the excellent, the just, the beautiful, the good. It's a lot more life-giving than the alternative. So I'm going to share with you the second part of Philippians chapter 4. What I just noticed in nature is that the wind blew my pages. But Paul continues in chapter 4. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I'm referring to being in need, for I've learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I've learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thanks be to God. so sweet no longer move my feet but I keep trying I keep on trying and all that I want is stillness of heart so I can start Start to find. 
Oh uh-huh. 